What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This week was a fun one as we got the second round of betas for iOS 16 and all the other major new software. So as we do every weekend, we're going to discuss more than 20 additional features and changes found here in beta 2. We're going to talk about the performance and battery life when to expect the public beta and more. And then after we talk software, we're going to discuss some crazy new features coming in the AirPods Pro 2, Apple's mixed reality headset, an extremely rare Apple device that just sold for over $450,000, and more. And if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. And if you're interested in seeing videos early and getting access to exclusive wallpapers, consider joining the members only club. Details for joining are in the description down below. All right, so let's start off with more new features and changes. So first up, Siri's UI for adjusting the screen brightness has changed. So watch this. What is my screen brightness at? So you can see this is what it looks like now in iOS 16. Here's what it looked like in iOS 15. So a nice change there. It looks a lot more modern and has more of a flat look to it. So I'm a fan of that. Now, another major change in iOS 16 beta 2 has to do with edited messages. So as you guys know, in iOS 16, when you send a message, you have 15 minutes to edit that message. So you can haptic press on it and you have the option now to edit. Well, there's actually a change in beta 2 that if you edit the message, if I just added one thing there and it's edited, now if a user is on iOS 15 or earlier, they will actually get a follow-up message telling them what the edited message said. So before, if you edited a message and you were texting a user on Android or iOS 15, it would not even say anything if you edited a message. But now it actually shows that user what you edited your message to say, which I think is a nice improvement. There's no change to undo send. So if you unsent a message, the user would not be notified that you unsent that. It wouldn't go away on their device if they're on iOS 15, but there's nothing changed to that. There's only a change with the edited message. We also have a change to screenshots. So if I go ahead and take a screenshot real quick, we tap on that, tap on done. We have a new option in beta two to save to quick note. So now if you tap on that, it will save that image to a quick note and not to your photo gallery. So if we tap on save right there, it is saved to our quick note and that's it. And if you want to access that quick note, of course you just go into your notes section right here. And then all the way up top, you will see quick notes right there. That is where you could see your quick notes and where that screenshot is saved since it won't be in your actual photos album. Now, speaking of photos, we also have a change to live photos. So now if you have a live photo, you will see we have this menu up in the top left with the drop down. That is not new. However, we now have an off switch right there. So before we had loop bounce and long exposure, but now we have the option to turn live photos off after we've already taken a photo. So if I turn that off, you can see it's no longer live. I can no longer have to press on that and play the live image. If we head into the wallet application and go to our Apple Pay cash card right here, you will see that we have a couple of changes. So first off, we have the three dots up in the top right. You could tap on that and you can view card details or search. Also right under here where it shows our balance, we now have this new send or request button. So it has just been moved. It looks better here in beta two. In Safari at the start page, we now have text up top that literally says start page. So on iOS 16 beta one over here on the left, you can see there was no text up top to say where we were at in Safari. The default video player also now has gesture controls to fast forward and rewind. So if we swipe to the left, you can see it goes back to the beginning. If we swipe to the right, it goes forward a little bit. And we could also scrub through the entire video no matter where our fingers at. So we don't have to be very precise and be down here, you know, right on the scrubber, we could do it from a gesture right up here in the middle of the screen, which is awesome. And speaking of Safari, I was gonna include this in my hidden features video, but it's gotten a lot of press now, so I may as well just show it in this video. But we now have the option to bypass CAPTCHAs in Safari. So if we go to our iCloud section right here and then go to password and security, and down at the very bottom, we have a brand new option called automatic verification. And it says bypass CAPTCHAs. I'm surprised Apple even used the word bypass in apps and on the web by allowing iCloud to automatically and privately verify your device and account. So this is an awesome feature. So we're no longer going to have to do, you know, those little puzzles or having to pick the trucks out of the selection of, of photos. It's going to bypass that if you have this enabled right here in iOS 16. We have a couple of changes to the maps application. So first off, you can see we have this very faint green outline that surrounds Yosemite National Park that basically just signifies where Yosemite National Park is and where it ends. So you can see that now for every national park. And if you go to a 
business or a national park on maps and you go to add your photos, you can see you get this new menu right there. That's a very quick pop out menu. Whereas before on at beta one, you had this section right here where it came up from the bottom, like very iOS 15 style. So just a better menu system there. And then also in the code, we see references to e-bike routing. So that is being worked on. It's not available right now, but there is going to be e-bike routing for those with electric bikes. Now, if you use the music recognition in the control center, you will like the fact that it now syncs with Shazam. So if you have a Shazam account, the music recognition feature will now sync with your Shazam application and your account. So what if for whatever reason before it used to be independent of one another, which never made sense, but now that's fixed with iOS 16. In the contacts application, we now have the option to import and export via drag and drop. So now we can go ahead and haptic press on a contact here. We can select a couple of contacts and we're able to import and export those very easily from here. We can drag and drop and open up another application and drop them in like a, you know, Google contacts or whatever other application you use for contacts, you can import them very easily that way. And if we go back to our main lists page, you can see that I can actually export a full list of contacts. So from here, I have the option to to email all message all and also exports you can also export all of these contacts very easily and import them into a, another application or another phone also in this section if we go to our subscriptions page right here this has been revamped so this is a server-side update it's not an iOS 16 exclusive you will see this on iOS 15 as well but this page here has been revamped it looks a lot better now for those with CarPlay if you had issues with your music being very staticky and very poppy just bad quality in general that has been fixed here with beta 2 I've had multiple people reach out and tell me that their CarPlay audio sounds much better and they can actually listen to it for hours at a time without having random bugs and static issues. So that's been fixed for CarPlay. Also, we have seen a fix for the lock screen. So a lot of people had issues where their lock screen, just the music would not show up. And sometimes some people said their time would not show up, but that appears to be fixed now in beta two. The main one was the music down here not showing up, but that appears to be showing up for everybody now. And then on iPad OS 16 beta two, if we go into our settings here and then scroll down, you will see that we have a new section under home screen. So if you go to home screen and dock right here, you will see we now have stage manager. So we have a whole section for that now. And it says stage manager lets you work with your favorite apps all arranged in a single view, use multiple overlapping windows at once and resize windows to different sizes. So that's all brand new right there. If you tap on that, you can see we have this new UI where we can enable or disable that. Okay, so this is definitely a bug because I cannot even disable stage manager right here. You can see it's like cut off, it cut off my settings right there. And I can't really, if I go into another application and pull it back up. Okay, there we go, it's fixed now. It shows it in this view, but you saw a little bug right there live. So that section in settings has been changed. Now you no longer need to go into control center to activate that. That was the only way to activate it before was through that control center. Now also the iPad is no longer able to be used as a home hub. So if you use this as your smart home hub, you're no longer able to do that after iOS 16. Now, as far as bugs go, there are quite a few bugs listed in the release notes for iOS 16 beta two. I'm not going to go through them just because there are a lot of very specific ones that don't really apply to most people so you can read through those if you want to you can see them on the screen right here but nothing really too crazy in those release notes i want to talk more about real life things real life bugs that you guys are facing and the first one is that you can no longer restart your iphone via siri at least not in beta 2 so let's go ahead and try that real quick let me go ahead and ask siri to restart my phone so you can see that siri tells me it cannot restart my phone but in beta 1 Look at this. You get the prompt to restart the device. So that could have been a bug in beta one, but I'm thinking that's more of just a bug here in beta two that it's not working properly. So Apple may be fixing something on the back end with that. I've also noticed that in select applications, dictation crashes that application. So if I enable dictation and I start typing, you know, with my voice, sometimes the application will just completely crash. And if I go back into it, it will not save the text that I was typing. So it didn't happen right here for Twitter, but it has happened before. It's also happened for me in Safari and also in other third-party applications. And then if we enter into a focus mode right here, so we go into my recording a video focus mode, you can see still on the lock screen, there's nowhere to disable that focus mode. We have to go all the way into our control center here and tap it to turn it off. We need something on the lock screen there to disable or at least change our focus mode. And then I'm also having a lot of issues with my wallpaper section right here. So there's been multiple times where I tap on customize and I go ahead to customize current wallpaper and it will crash my settings. 
So that's happened to me twice. And also sometimes, you know, if you go to here and go to configure, you will see if we go on to photos, sometimes my photos would not populate. It would just show this menu right here, but it wouldn't show any of my photos. So I've been having issues with that. That's expected. This is a new element. It's a new section in iOS 16. So I'm expecting bugs, but I'm just reporting on them in this video. But as far as Apple Music goes, I really haven't had too many issues with Apple Music. I had a lot of issues in beta one, but in beta two so far, it has not crashed on me one time, which my biggest complaint in beta one was pretty much Apple Music crashing. So I'm glad the Apple fix that quickly. Oh, and before I talk about the performance and battery life, I should also mention that the heat has definitely dissipated quite a bit here in beta two. So it does not heat up. My phone does not heat up near as much as it did in beta one. So throughout this video, I've been touching this part on my phone and has not gotten very hot. It's a little bit warm, but it's definitely not hot, not even close to as bad as it was in beta one. All right, so now performance. So performance on beta two is definitely better than it was in beta one. So I have noticed animations seem smoother, especially switching between applications Applications quickly the animation seemed quicker going from my notification center down to back up is quicker and more fluid I'd have some stutter here before in beta 1 and it also would sometimes not show the blur all the way to the very top but now you can see if I go slowly it always shows the blur right there so just overall performance is definitely better than it was in beta 1 and then as far as the battery life goes battery life is significantly improved over beta one. So beta one just drained battery like crazy. I talked about that from the very beginning, how battery life was just not good. It would heat up and just drain that battery like crazy. So if you're wondering if you should install it on your main device, I would still hold off. The battery life is still not great. It's much better than beta one, but it still has a ways to go before it gets on iOS 15's level. And I'm thinking it's gonna be good enough by beta three, which of course is when Apple is going to release the public beta. So Apple usually always knows when it's you know good enough or suffice enough for a daily device. All right, so now what is next for Apple? When can we expect to see iOS 16 beta three and iOS 16 public beta? So we're on a two week cycle right now for these iOS 16 releases. So given the fact that we got beta two this week, we should skip next week, the week of the 27th. And that would mean that iOS 16 developer beta three should come on the week of July 4th, which is a US holiday, but we could still see iOS 16 beta three the very next day on the fifth. I think any day from the fifth through the seventh as possible. And then as far as the public beta goes, the public beta usually comes out a week after the developer beta. So we should see public beta one on the week of the 11th. So it's most likely going to come earlier in the week than later. So I would say the 11th or the 12th, but we'll have to wait and see. I would say that the fourth and the 11th, those two weeks are when we should see beta three for developers and beta one for public beta testers. And keep in mind, beta three for developers is the same build as public beta one. And then as far as iOS 15.6 goes, it seems like Apple just completely forgot about 15.6 this past week. So we should have seen iOS 15.6 beta four this week, but now it seems likely that the RC build is just going to come next week. So we might see iOS 15.6 release candidate next week, and then a final release the following week, most likely on the week of July 4th, just like where we'll see iOS 16 beta three. But of course, a lot of things can change. And if you want to see up to the minute updates on these iOS releases, make sure to follow me over on Twitter. That link is down in the description below. And then finally, let's move on to the latest Apple news. So first up, let's talk about the upcoming AirPods Pro 2, because we didn't think they would be much different from the first generation. We thought maybe just better audio quality and that's about it. But we're now hearing that there might be even more changes than expected. So according to 52 Audio, who has a pretty mixed track record, the second generation Pro will have hearing aid capabilities, heart rate detection, temperature detection, a USB-C port instead of lightning, an upgraded H1 chip, and find my support. And the main thing that caught my eye, aside from the USB-C port, is the hearing aid feature. So when they were talking about the case, they said this, quote, we also find the openings on the right side are the microphone for the hearing aid. Sound can be collected through the charging case and transmitted to the earphone for sound enhancement and playback helping people with hearing loss get the environment sound. The speaker is at the bottom, which can play the sound itself and works with the Find My app to help users get the location of the charging case more quickly. So that sounds awesome, but I'm just not sold on that yet. I think we're gonna have to see a report from a more credible source, but if that was an actual feature, that would be awesome. They also mentioned this, AirPods Pro 2 will be equipped with a heart rate detection sensor to collect and analyze the wearer's inner ear data to monitor heart rate. It is said that this heart rate monitoring sensor also supports temperature detection, but it won't be confirmed 
confirmed until the product is released. And then in a separate report from 9to5Mac, we're hearing that the AirPods Pro 2 will have significantly better audio quality due to the support of the LC3 codec or low complexity communication codec. So that LC3 codec is Bluetooth's future low power and high quality codec that is coming soon to headphones. So this is going to allow you to transmit audio at much lower bit rates without dropping the audio quality. And that will not only improve audio quality and audio calls, but also improve battery life and also causes less desynchronization. And this is all in theory. We can't really hear any of this yet because we need new hardware with Bluetooth 5.2. So even though the design will basically be the same and we haven't really heard of any new colors coming, at least we'll have much better audio quality with Bluetooth 5.2 and some awesome new health features. Next up, let's talk about Apple's AR VR headset. I know you're probably tired of hearing about it, but you have to realize this is probably going to be Apple's biggest product launch in the next 10 years. So this latest news come from none other than Ming-Chi Kuo, who wrote up a lengthy Medium post describing what to expect from this headset and doubling down on Apple announcing it at a standalone event in January 2023. So he calls this headset a game changer and says that it will be, quote, the most complicated product Apple has ever designed. And after Apple launches the headset, quote, global rivals will compete to imitate it, leading the headset hardware industry to the next stage of rapid growth and benefiting the related services and content ecosystem. He also touches on Meta, aka Facebook's current status with their VR headset and more. So this is very interesting stuff. And I just cannot wait for this announcement. I mean, I'm really ready to see what Apple's going to do in this mixed reality space. And then finally, we don't have too much news this week, but you do guys remember a few episodes back when we talked about that rare Apple One computer that was signed by Waz that went up for auction on eBay? Well, that one sold for $340,000. But we also had another one that just recently sold at auction, and it was even more rare. So this was an Apple One computer hand numbered by Steve Jobs himself. So it was one of 50 rare bite shop Apple One computers, which got its name from the infamous California computer shop called The Byte Shop. So back when Apple was just a small startup, Steve Jobs approached the owner and asked if he could sell Apple products in that store. So at the time, Jobs was planning to sell bare circuit boards for $40, but the owner told him that the only way he was going to be interested in selling those computers was if they were fully assembled, and he promised to order 50 of them for $500 each. So Jobs agreed, and The Byte Shop became the first retailer of the original original Apple One computer. And over the span of the next 10 months, Jobs and Wozniak produced almost 200 Apple One computers and sold 175 of them. And now, all these years later, one of those computers just sold for $468,750, which was even more than the estimated $450,000 final bid. So that is just such a cool piece of history to have. And the whole story behind that is just awesome. So there you have it, guys. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some additional features and changes found in iOS 16 beta 2. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Big shout out to the members. I've been really pushing for members lately. I've been putting a lot of perks in there for members. So if you guys want to join the members only club, if you made it this far, I would really appreciate it. Just click the join button if you're on desktop. If not, I do have a link down in the description below if you're on mobile. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 16 coverage and, of course, more Apple Weekly episodes coming every single weekend. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.